unto you. Read. That destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. How are these Christian pastors scattering the sheep Bring of the up. Lord's pasture? Somebody help me out. How are they scattering the sheep? We the sheep, how are they scattering us? They're not telling us who we are. Right. They, they're teaching us to follow the slave master's doctrine Bring from 1619. Right. They're scattering us mentally. We don't know who we are. Christ is, Christ is whatever you want him to look like. He's, right. he's every color. Right. What's, what's your name again? Brian. Brian, you ever seen a man that looks like every color? No. No, no Christ looks like one of the type of men that's on the earth right now. And what man is that? The black man. That's but right. the so-called Christian pastors are scattering the sheep of the Lord's pasture. Say of the Lord's pasture. I'm sorry. Say of the Lord. Uh -huh. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors. So the Lord is against the pastors. Read. That feed my people. That feed his people, the children of Israel. What? Lies. They feeding lies. They saying John 3:16 means the whole the, the world is everybody. That's not what that means. They say Christ didn't have a color. That's not what the Bible says. They say uh, uh, King James was a white man. He was a homosexual. That's not the case either. Bring it up. They're feeding us lies and they're causing us to be scattered. Read. Right. Ye have scattered my flock uh -huh. and driven them away. He, the, the, the pastors have driven us away from who? They've driven us away from the Lord. The, the Christian pastors are lying to our people. Right. That's right. Christianity is a force. Christianity is a lie. Right. Christianity is going to keep our people in slavery here in America. That's right. right. Read. Right. And have not visited them. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Put the joint in park. Come over here and check out these signs. Read. Right. Bring it up. Behold, I will visit upon you what the Lord says that he's going to visit these Christian pastors. Bring it up. You do not want the Lord to visit you. Because when he comes to meet you, he ain't meeting you as a man. He's going to meet you as a God, and you ain't going to be able to stand. Behold, uh -huh. I will visit upon you the evil of your doing. These Christian pastors are evil according to the Bible. They're not teaching you that homosexuality is a sin. They're teaching you to be liberal, to accept everything that the white man gives you. But everything the white man has given you is a lie. Christianity is a lie. Politics is a lie. Sports are a lie. Right. These are all things that are scattering our people, keeping us in slavery, right. keeping us in sin. We must repent. Sir. That's right. Read. Saith the Lord, uh -huh. and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven, driven them. We are the remnant of God's flock, and right. we're being gathered today. That's why the pork chop eating pastor didn't have anybody over there. The time of the, that era is over. Right. right. We've been here for 400 years and still going to Christian church. Right. The white man taught us that doctrine. He said, look, find a black man and have him sing and dance and make him do all of this and that, but don't teach him what the Bible really say. Just read this scripture about servants obey your masters. The servants and the masters in that scripture ain't talking about the white man. That's right. The white man is the servant, according to Leviticus chapter 25. We'll go into that later, read. And we'll bring them again to their folds. So we will return to our fold. What is our fold? These 12 tribes of Israel right here. Sis, come on, man. Come look at this sign and tell me where you find yourself on that sign. We will return to our fold. We will return to our Lord. We will return to our true shepherd, which is Christ. A black man with a bearded face, fringes on his clothes that don't eat pork, shrimp, crab, or lobster. That's right. And he damn sure not in no church on Sunday. That's right. That white man you see on the wall in church on Sunday, that is not Jesus Christ. That is the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's right. Keep reading. And they shall be fruitful and increase. So this is the place that you'll be fruitful and increase. You're going to increase in what? Understanding. You're going to increase in knowledge. How are you going to be fruitful? You're going to take this knowledge and understanding and you're going to do what? Apply it. So if I have a sister standing next to me, I'm going to marry her, right? I'm not going to have sex with her without marrying her because that destroys my community. Right. Right. And how did I understand that? Because I increased in knowledge. Bring it up. And now I have children with that woman. I'm not a baby daddy and she a baby mama. That's up. my wife and I'm her husband. Right. And I provide for her and for my children. Bring That's up. how we become fruitful and possess the earth. Right. Was that it in verse 4? Three. And I will set up shepherds. We are the shepherds. Right. We are the true shepherds of the nation of Israel. Not these people. These Christian churches been on every block and every hood for how many generations? And we still on section eight? Bring it up. We still baby mamas? Right. We still baby daddies? Right. We still getting welfare, food stamp, section eight and all that? Bring it up. 
How has that profited our people? It has not. That's why we must turn away from it. The Lord showed you something spiritually today when the brother was over there and his microphone didn't work and nobody was over there. Right. Because he's not the real shepherd. Yeah, that's right. Keep reading. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. What are we going to feed you with? We're going to feed you with the true bread of life. Yes, right. The true water of life. Right. Which is the, the Bible, God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. And the faith in Christ. These are the things that we're going to feed you with. Bring it up. We're going to feed. When you come to us, you're not going to leave hungry, sis. Right. You drove up hungry. That's why the window was down spiritually. You're like, dang, what are they talking about? Why are they so yeah. passionate? Right. We're passionate about our, about our people. Because right. we see you as a sister, and we want to see you repent. That's when right. Christ cracked that sky, and he come to gather his flock, his foe, we want you to be amongst us. Right. We want you to be amongst us. Right. Both of y'all to be amongst us as a married husband and wife. Bring it up. We want you to find a husband. We want you to find a wife right. to have children. These are the things that the Lord will be pleased with when he returns. Right. But if he returns and we still in our sin, we still got the blonde hair, we still in church on Sunday, we still eating that pork chop, we still going to Captain George's on Mother's Day, Christ will put you to death. The wages for sin is death. Right. We want to teach you how to repent from your sins. Keep reading. And they shall fear no more. Because we're in fear right now. That if, if we ride in that car, you see them blue and red lights, you in fear because you just remember somebody on the news last year, the year before, this year, got killed by a police officer. We in fear walking through our own communities. Dang, I got the wrong color on the day. I won't even think about where I'm at. They might try to get at me. Dang, uh, I took my baby, my baby daddy to court and now he pissed. I'm scared to see him now. We in fear, why? Because we in sin. Bring it out. Hey sis, bring your kids over here. Come check these signs out. We got some, out. some information you need to hear, read. Nor be dismayed. We will not be dismayed anymore. We will not be confused in our mind. We will not be misunderstood. We will not be misjudged. We will not be dismayed. Keep it. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. We are lacking everything right now here in America. Right. We don't have our own resources. We don't have our own schools. Right. We don't have our own communities. Bring it out. Whatever we do is provided to us by our oppressor. Right. But Christ says that he will gather his true sheep under the true shepherds, which all ultimately submit themselves to Christ. Bring it out. Now, the brother earlier was talking about slavery, how we in slavery and how we need to come out. There's a doctrine that's floating around there. For, hey, my brother over here with the black shirt. Hey, somebody get my brother with the hat. Hey, my man, we, we want to see your shirt. Can we get it on camera? Can you come closer? Our, our camera's over here. We want to get your shirt on camera. Right. Yeah, Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. Hey, somebody tell the brother with the 400-year shirt, we, we need him. Okay. okay. All right, he coming. He coming. All right, so the shirt says 1619 to 2019. It's over. We're going to wait for the brother to come up. And we just want to clarify something for the people because we saw a lot of those shirts floating around today. Bring it up. And we don't want no confusion amongst our people. Right. Sis, do you understand what your nationality is according to the Bible? Yeah. All right, come find yourself on this side. Tell me where you at. Yeah. All right, we just wanted to get your shirt on camera. So the, the shirt says 16, huh? Exactly. Levi, your father's uh, Haitian. Yeah. All praises, all praises. We need more sisters from the tribe of Levi. Yes, more boy. sisters from the tribe of Judah. More brothers from the tribe of Issachar. Bring it out. And show us the back for us, bro. So 1619 to 2019, it's over. It's over. Because the Bible says that Abraham's children will be a servant in a land for 400 years. Bring it out. Read. Genesis. All right, thank you, bro. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. You got that? And he said unto Abram, uh -huh. Know for of a surety, so know for sure, Abraham, read, that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. The Bible says that the children of Abraham, his descendants, would be uh, in a strange land for what? That thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Is this land ours? Is the land of America, does this belong to us? You think so? Why do you say so? Okay, okay, so some of our brothers and sisters were here first, and it belonged to them then, but when the white man showed up, what did he do? He took it from us, right? So the brothers and sisters that were already here belonged to them then. They called it by their own, whatever names they wanted to name the land. But guess what, when the white man came, who got, give me uh, Psalms 49 and 11. When the white man came, he did something different. 
He took ownership of it. He know. possessed it. Right. And he still owns it to this day. How, yes, do, how right. do we know? Because if you own a piece of property, who you got to pay taxes to? You know. The white man. Right. The government is synonymous with the white man. Donald Trump's a white man. Barack Obama was controlled by a white man. Right. If you rule in this place, it's ruled by the so-called white man. Give me that. Right. So chapter 49, verse 11. Is that what I want? Read. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. The inward thought of the so-called white man is that this kingdom will never be destroyed. You, matter, well, we, we're dealing with the fathers. We're not dealing with the mothers right now. As long as your father comes from the 12 tribes of Israel, you can hear this message. Now the Bible says that, uh, read that again, sister distracted. Verse 11, uh -huh. their inward thought is. Oh yeah, their inward thought is that their houses will continue forever. You ever seen a stamp? And on the top of this, you got the uh, American flag. What does it say? Um, it say America forever. America forever. Next time you look at a stamp, tell me what it says. It says America forever. The Bible is a real book, and it's talking about the white man right here. Read. And their dwelling places to all generations. So they think that they're going to rule forever. That's why they're still build, building uh, nuclear aircraft carriers. Right. That's why they're still building warships and airplanes and setting up new bases in every right. country acro across the land of the earth. Bring it up. Right? They call their lands after their own names. They call their lands after their own names. You think America was called America when it belonged to us? Nah, it wasn't. It wasn't called America until a white man named Amerigo Vespucci came here took control of the land, and then changed the name. Right. Right. That's exactly what the Bible says. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 15. Read. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. Uh-huh. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety, know for sure, this is definitely going to happen. This is a prophecy, Abraham. Read. That thy seed, that thy children, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. So, is this land ours right now? No, it's not. A stranger in a land that's not theirs, read. And it shall serve them. And shall be slaves there. Were we slaves here? Are we still slaves here? Yes. Read. And they shall afflict them 400 years. 400 years. The Bible says that the children of Abraham will be slaves in a land that's not theirs and afflicted for 400 years. But the question is, is that talking about America or is that talking about something else? Because everybody got t-shirts around here that say 1619 to 2019. It's over. Any takers? It's gotta be somewhere else. Let's go to Acts chapter seven. Give me verse six and seven. We gotta understand what the Bible's talking about. We can't just pull a random scripture out the book and make a t-shirt. We gotta have understanding of the scripture. Right. Read. Verse six. Acts chapter seven, verse six. And God spake on this wise. That his seed shall that Abraham's seed read should sojourn in a strange land, uh -huh. and that they should bring them into bondage, slavery. So this is referencing the prophecy from Genesis chapter 15. Read. Bring it up. And entreat them evil uh -huh. 400 years. Read. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, say God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. So this, this, this prophecy from Genesis chapter 15, it wasn't talking about America. What was it talking about? Give me verse 34. Verse 34, I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt. Which is in where? In Egypt. The prophecy was talking about when we were in Egypt a long time ago. Moses already led us out of Egypt. Moses already took us into the wilderness. The Lord already gave us the commandments. We already served them. When it says in this place, it's talking about Jerusalem. We already served them in Jerusalem. That's right. And we have not gone back yet. Read. And I have heard their groaning uh -huh. and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses whom they refused saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge? Right. So what I want y'all to understand is that the 400 year prophecy was for the land of Egypt. Right. The forefathers, our forefathers, when Christ was on the earth, they asked him the same question. Lord, when is the kingdom going to come? Let's see what Christ said. Give me Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Did Christ say 400 years? Did he say something else? Read. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Uh -huh. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time 
restore the again the kingdom to Israel. So Christ is now the time that we're gonna be delivered from our bondage. Bring it up. What did Christ say? Read verse seven. Uh huh. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in His own power. The Lord, the Father in heaven, has determined when we'll be delivered out of this bondage. Right. Four hundred years is not the answer. Right. 400 years is here today. Give me um, Matthew chapter 24. I think I want verse 36. We don't know the day nor the hour nor the year Bring when Christ up. will return. Bro. But, but we, as the time approaches, we must make sure that we're getting ourselves together. Bring it up. We must be repenting from our sins. There's laws that you got to apply, sis, to get yourself ready for Christ's return. The same for you, sis. The same for you, brother, and you, sister. We all must strive towards perfection. Bring it up. You got that? Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day, of the day that Christ returns, and hour, and the exact time that Christ returns, no man, no, not an angel of heaven, but my Father only. Only the Father in heaven knows what year, That's what season, right. what day, what time Christ is coming back. So I don't want anybody to get their hopes up that Christ is coming back in 2019, because what's going to happen in 2020? If right. he didn't come back, now you done fell out. Now you done stopped applying the commandments. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.